Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Eric C. This is the art, and with them, I make a lot of noise. Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope everyone's doing well out there. Yeah, I'm back again with the Kramer, and this is going to be just kind of a follow-up of everything that's been done with this guitar, and kind of knowing what you're getting into before you get into it and then coming up with a plan of action to basically you know get it done and follow certain steps in a way that uh, uh, makes sense of how you're going to do things instead of just jumping right in and starting to strip things out and take things apart with no idea of how you're going to get it done in what way you're going to get it done and what you're going to use to get it done with so right here basically this is the unboxing of wally in a box's kramer guitar and not knowing exactly the issues of the guitar uh beforehand uh kind of a big surprise when i did the unboxing of it and some of the things that i've seen and then coming up with a plan to try to fix them uh again in a way that kind of makes sense instead of just jumping in and start slopping shit all over it so inspecting the guitar as i'm taking it apart notice the issue with the back of the neck right where one of the screws is for the locking nut which is kind of a bad place to have a crack looking at it putting a little bit of stress on it trying to see uh, if the crack is going to either uh, expand a little bit or if it's going to be something that uh, it's in the wood but it hasn't quite gone through the wood. And I noticed that it really hasn't gone quite through the wood. I couldn't get any, uh, you know, grabbing a hold of the neck and the headstock and trying to open up that gap where the crack was really wasn't going anywhere. So a simple fix with a, you know, a piece of wood and uh, cutting out the opening for the piece of wood that I was going to use, gluing it in place using Tight Bond 2 and some CA glue and then uh, reshaping it into uh back with the contour of the neck and it should last uh this fix should last for a very long time so the headstock seemed like it was pretty much just a standard spray out headstock with a logo on it until i started going through many many layers of uh clear coat paint and then back to clear coat several times because there were was a couple logos that were on this headstock of the guitar until I finally reached a what looked like a black piece of plastic that was on top of the headstock which worked out pretty good because uh, you know it's a nice flat surface and I'm not taking any wood away from the headstock by sanding it. So instead of going with the plain Jane Kramer look black headstock with the gold logo, I wanted to do a little bit something different. So I got a hold of Wally in a box, asked him if it would be all right, showed him a photo of a similar guitar that I did some photo editing on, and he gave me the thumbs up to go ahead and, you know, kind of do what I will. I put a lot of kick guitars together mostly every one of them was a custom one of a kind i've done a few refinishes on regular guitars and even turned those into a custom one of a kind as well uh why make this one any different so i ended up striping the headstock and i already had the plan and the okay to stripe the body so i figured you know what i want this to match a little bit so I could have done the striping in a whole different way. I could have ordered some vinyl automotive tape, racing stripes, whatever, and then cut them down the size of what I needed. They are on the internet. You can get them in any color and uh, very easy to apply. You know, you could trim them down to what you need and how you want it to look and just place them wherever you want to place them. But I decided to go... A little bit of the harder way of painting well actually it wasn't that hard 
some Piapos that were in two interviews that were taken down uh, ended up saying that how hard it was to uh, mask something and not have any paint bleed underneath the tapes. Well, doing it this way and how I showed in my videos and stuff basically would help that person out as far as uh, knowing, understanding, and learning how to do it. Use light coats. Don't flood the paint up against the tape lines. And you should be okay with not having any bleed through underneath your tape. You know, light coats until you get the depth or the color that you're looking for. In this case, it was white. So I probably could have just leveled the frets, did a crowning, polishing on them, and call it done. But I was kind of worried about how much fret would have been left over if I would have did a leveling on them and if there would have been enough fret to do a nice crown and polishing left over after leveling them. So I decided to pluck them. And in doing so, I ended up re-radiusing radius, nah, radius the fretboard itself. This has got a 20 inch radius in it and uh, make it a nice smooth fresh fretboard and then applying the new frets and then ended up doing a fret leveling and crowning and polishing afterwards. So it's basically should feel like a whole new fretboard. So the real problem part was the body. This body is made out of plywood, which makes it to where it's really not as strong as a solid wood body would be. Wally in the box said something about the Floyd Rose kind of dancing around as it's pivoting uh, on its post and finding out that the sleeves were loose inside the holes after disassembling. So I ended up putting uh, some oak dowel rod, gluing them in with some uh, tight bond and securing them, letting them dry. And later I'll be drilling those holes out after the finishing of the guitar is done so I can realign everything. I ended up finding a lot of cracking going on around the edge of the body, kind of where the layers of the plywood would be glued together. And it was through the finish. I don't know how much it was actually penetrated through the wood as far as these cracks go, but a little trick that I learned on how to fix them is using thin set CA glue and working it into the crack since it's a thin set pretty much like water uh, it'll work its way and find its way and then you can build it up a little bit more a little bit more until the crack is completely filled on the finish this way when I do my sanding the crack is going to basically disappear so after sanding I hit it a few times with some white primer which is going to make it easy to apply the white paint over the primer after the primer was wet sanded. If you use a darker primer and then go with a lighter color, you may have bleed through. And bleed through of the darker color through the white will cause you to have to add more paint to the surface to cover up that bleed through. And I don't like putting heavy coats of paint on anything. I like going with light coats uh, enough to where you could still wet sand it and not go through the paint itself where you're going to have to start all over again. This way with the white primer, light coats of the white paint, then I did my masking and then I hit it with the fluorescent pink on top of that. All right, so after letting the finish dry a little bit, at least to the touch, I ended up removing all of the masking tape. And as you could see, nice, crisp, solid lines, no bleed through whatsoever. That's why I say light coats when you're spraying, especially if you're doing any type of, it's one thing to want to cover something up and flood it, you know, with a lacquer, uh, you can kind of do that because it melts into each other, but you can risk that finished cracking later on. With enamels um, and acrylics, you have to be careful, especially with enamels, because 
the heavier you spray it, the longer it takes to dry and it stays soft for a very long time. So using those types of paints, um, you know, it's kind of pain ass. Now this is an acrylic paint that I put on here. And again, like I said, light coats. Just mist it until you get the depth of the color that you want. Now, the epoxy resin that I put on this thing is water resistant and it is weather resistant. It says so right on the box. So that makes this kind of nice as far as not having problems where uh, moisture gets into the wood and starts to swell, crack, and everything else. So as you can see over here, all of the cracking that was on the side and the bottom are gone, completely gone. Using this epoxy resin is it almost makes this thing bulletproof. It's very, very durable as a finish. I like it. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to apply. You've seen the last video how I applied it. I can only do one side at a time. It's not like I can do, you know, multiple sides all at one time. So the top has been, the top is cured. It's pretty much dry to the touch now. And the only thing I have to deal with is when I flip this thing over, I have to remove the drips from the bottom, which isn't that bad. Now I put a thin coat on top of here, which means I'm gonna end up putting a second layer on top of this, and it'll be another thin coat. This is, like I said, it's cure to the touch, but it's still kind of um, not rubbery, but uh, it's flexible is what I wanna say. So what I do is, you know, it doesn't stick to wax paper. So what I end up doing is I'll end up peeling it up off the wax paper and kind of bending it a little bit to see how flexible it is. If it's still flexible like this, um, yeah, it still needs to cure a little while longer. But it does make for a beautiful finish. Uh, you could sand it, you can wet sand it, you could polish it, and... I wish I didn't have to do anything with this thing because it came out like glass. It's also self-leveling. So wherever there was a problem area where it just, you know, didn't look right in the last video, it self-levels itself to where everything is flat. And, uh, yeah. Again, the cracking in the neck pockets on each side of the neck pocket, that is gone. There's nothing there now. So I'm going to wait until I get the headstock logo because I'm not going to go with the gold one, black one. And once that comes in, I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is epoxy resin the top of the headstock and seal up the logo inside there and also seal up the striping. That way the headstock color and depth that this has now, these stripes have a lot of depth to them with the epoxy resin. It'll also match with the headstock once I finish the headstock as well. So you both don't look different. So I got a little bit of an unboxing here to do. And this is for the Kramer guitar. So I got it right here. And I'm going to open this up. So I've been using the Dragonfire pickups on a lot of my builds and a lot of, well, not builds, but the kick guitars. And I kind of like them. They, they, they have the, almost the same sound quality as a lot of the higher brand names without spending a lot of money, uh, especially like their high distortion or high gain, uh, high output pickups. They, they, I kind of like them. They have some good sound. So what I ended up doing is I picked up a set of Dragon Fires. Now these are the, uh, which ones are these? It doesn't say. So let me open up the box. Uh, let's see here. This is the goodie package that it comes with. So I've got the pots, got the battery control, got some wiring. Um, also comes with a output jack which I'm not going to be using the output jack now the five-way switch I really don't care for too much you know this is kind of the box five-way switch that was on this guitar to begin with I'll probably end up be using one of my own and these pots here are um, where are these pots 
made in Korea. Yeah. So I won't be using these pots as well. I'll be using the CTS pots. Now, okay, so it's got two. Hmm, wonder why it's got another cap right here. I'll have to look at the instructions and see why they did it this way. So here are the instructions. And they don't have a cap on the output jack, but it does show the wiring how it works out. Yeah, so I'll be wiring this thing up basically the same way as it would be wired up with a five-way switch. The only thing is, is I won't be using the humbucker that this thing comes with. Now, these are supposed to be noiseless pickups. Yeah, my thumb is still pink. And they are just going to be black. That's it. That's all they are. So they're set up kind of just like they, a uh, EMG pickup would be set up with the you know plug on there, and uh, which is kind of nice. These should fit perfectly in the uh, covers. Where are they? They should be basically the same size and everything else. So they should fit fine with the old covers, which I'm going to polish those up. But yeah, this is what I'm going to be using for his guitar. So he's going to have two noise, noiseless single coils with the EMG and everything is going to be an active system. So yeah, this is going to be a nice little setup for him. So I'm going to put this all back in the box. This guy here. Now I have a set of the EMGs, well one of the EMGs, in a previous guitar, and they sound good. They actually sound pretty damn good. So yeah, that's it. It's got some weight to it too, it's pretty heavy. How heavy is this one here? Yeah, they feel about the same. All right, so that's that. That's my story. I'm sticking to it, and uh, yeah, I will catch up with all you guys later.